Good day, class. Congratulations, everyone. We are down to our last session for Module 1 about the nature, concepts, and purposes of curriculum. Our last talking point will be the principles of curriculum design. After this session, you will be able to identify the principles of curriculum design. There are seven principles of curriculum design. These are challenge and enjoyment, breadth, progression, depth, coherence, relevance, personalization, and choice. Why do you think it is important that there are principles in designing a curriculum? Let's start with challenge and enjoyment. Children and young people should find their learning challenging, engaging, and motivating. The curriculum should encourage high aspirations and ambitions for all. At all stages, learners of all aptitudes and abilities should experience an appropriate level of challenge to enable each individual to achieve his or her potential. Examples are our culminating activities, pageants, performance tasks, presentations, and etc. Learners should be active in their learning and have opportunities to develop and demonstrate their creativity. There should be support to enable children and young people to sustain their effort. Second principle of curriculum is a breadth. All children and young people should have the opportunities for broad range of experiences. Their learning should be planned and organized so that they will learn and develop through a variety of texts within both the classroom and other aspects of school life. Their experiences should not be limited. Examples, we have hands-on activities like laboratory experiments, demonstrations, field trips or study tours, and etc. Third is progression. This means that children and young people should experience continuous progression in their learning from ages 3 to 18 years. Each stage should build upon earlier knowledge and achievements. Children and young people should be able to progress at a rate which meets their individual needs and aptitudes. The fourth principle is depth. There should be opportunities for children and young people to develop their full capacity for different types of thinking, learning, exploring, and achieving more advanced levels of understanding. Fifth is coherence. Children and young people's learning activities should combine to form a coherent experience or a connected experience. There should be clear links between different aspects of learning. Such links should be discussed with the children and young people in order to bring different strands of learning together. Learning experiences and activities should be connected to each other. The sixth is relevance. Children and young people should understand the purpose of their learning and related activities. They should see the value of what they are learning and its relevance to their lives, present and future. They should know the importance of a relevance on why are they learning such concept. Seventh is personalization and choice. The learning is planned for children and young people should respond to their individual needs and support particular aptitudes and talents. It should provide opportunities for exercising responsible personal choice. Once children and young people have achieved suitable levels of attainment across wide range of learning areas, the choice should become as open as possible. When we say personalization and choice, 
teacher should consider the diversity of learners. It includes the learning styles and the different intelligences of the learners. Again, we have the seven principles of curriculum design, namely challenge and enjoyment, breadth, progression, depth, coherence, relevance, personalization, and choice. Are you learning? I hope you are. Again, congratulations for finishing Module 1. If you have questions, post those in our Google Classroom. Also, check out our activities and deliverables in our Google Classroom. This has been Ms. Pretzel and Red. Thank you for listening and stay safe. Take me where you go When the sun goes down